O Almighty God, merciful Father, <coughs> I, a poor, miserable sinner, have confessed unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of the promise of mercy, and of the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings of
He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear Christians, I know it's not always easy to 
what our Lord means when he said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you as well. Not out of thin air, but through the unchanging word. We've been saying about this in our hymn. Now to my Father I depart, from earth to heaven ascending, and heavenly wisdom to impart, the Holy Spirit sending. In trouble he will comfort you and teach you always to be true, and into truth shall guide you. And where do we find the truth and comfort in a world that is so full of unbelief and lies and the deception of the devil? In one place only, in the Word. The unchanging word of truth that has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit through the preaching and teaching of the prophets and the apostles. And if that wasn't enough, the Lord even takes it out of your hands whether you believe or not. Because that's his gift from above for you as well. Even your faith in the word is from Christ. And this word which you have faith in, through the Holy Spirit, comforts you to know that death will not eternally separate you from those whom you love who have died in Christ Jesus. Because that too is the blessed work the Father gives to the Spirit for you and I, that we might not die but live eternally. Because as Jesus told his desperate, despairing <coughs> disciples on that night which he was betrayed, so the Holy Spirit will glorify me, but he will take what is mine and declare it to me. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Through this word, you have the very heart and mind of God the Father himself revealed to you so that you can have absolute comfort in all times of despair and suffering. And this is the beautiful mystery that gives us joy. That God would come to us, that he would reveal to us the truth of our salvation, the depth of his love, and the sacrifice that he made for us. By his right arm, by his arms nailed to the cross, you have received salvation, revealed to you through the unchanging external word of God. We sang this in our head too. But God has seen my wretched state before the world's foundation, and mindful of his mercies, great. He planned for my salvation. He turned to me a father's heart. He did not choose the easy part, but gave his dearest treasure. It's true. We need the Lord's gift of faith and salvation. This is our one true treasure in this life, above all other things. It's what calls us here today to hear and keep on hearing. It's a true treasure to hang on to because all of the things of this world will fade away. Each one of us will experience death. And yet, this faith that has been given to us, this promise of the gospel, is unchanging. It is a treasure that has been given to us, the very crown of life. Even though we will be tempted in this life to sin, Yes, our sin leads to suffering and death. And thanks be to God. Even though we do sin daily and much, it's not to eternal death that we are led. Because we are Christ. You see, this is also the work of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they don't believe in me. Even as Paul said, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. The Holy Spirit speaking truth through the Apostle Paul declared that having been baptized, we are to walk in newness of life. And that means to keep on hearing and keep on being doers of God's word. Because yes, every time we sin is a sign of unbelief. Every time we sin without repentance, is driving out the Holy Spirit because we show our lack of faith in God's word. James made this clear as well. Of his own he will, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, 
that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You see, if we truly are God's children, saved by grace, we should act like it in our lives. We have been saved, set free from sin, given the gift of eternal life, and yet how often do we live? As if we mattered most and God's word didn't matter at all. So again, here's the law from James, acknowledged by the early church to be the first bishop and even the, of Jerusalem and even the brother of our Lord. Know this, my beloved brothers, let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. You know, we wouldn't even know what sin was if it wasn't revealed to us by God himself through his word. So that word implanted in us, it's not the law that saves us, it is the gospel. And yet, we know we have not kept the law as we should, and that's why we need Christ. As we learn from the fifth and eighth commandments, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Remember that Jesus said, even our thoughts, when we say, oh, that person is a fool or an idiot, is the same as breaking the fifth commandment. And then we have the eighth commandment. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? Fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation. Repent him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest possible way, or as we used to say in the old catechism, put the best instruction on all things. We you know that you have not done this, neither have I. You have not kept God's commandments perfectly. In our sin, there is nothing we can brag about before God or our neighbor that deserves his love. Just the opposite. We deserve death. But all our sin is nothing compared to the love of Christ for us. And that's why we cling to him in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give him thanks. Because as we know, the only unforgivable sin is the unbelief that drives out the Holy Spirit. And that's why we sing so often as we do. That's why the divine service over and over, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we sing these words not doubting God's love and mercy, because we desires it. Even as we sing in the offertory, take not your Holy Spirit from me. With these words, we are holding on to the tree and rejoicing that God has had mercy does and has sent his Holy Spirit. And just as we sang in the hymn confessing our faith, our hope, and our comfort in Christ in his words, to me he said, stay close to me. I am your rock and castle. Your ransom I myself will be, will be for you I strive and wrestle. For I am yours and you are mine. And where I am you may remain. The foe shall not divide us. That's a summary of our Lord's precious gospel preached to us and planted into our ears. Jesus makes this clear when he told his anxious disciples concerning judgment, the ruler of this world is judged. Through Christ departing this world in death, the devil thought that he had defeated the Lord of creation by devouring a mere man. But in reality, it was through the death of God's own Son that God brings eternal life to you. The devil has been defeated. His main weapon, death, has been taken away. Because in faith, death will not devour you. Faith in the truth of God's word is what brings us joy in our suffering, just as the reality of his resurrection brought ultimate joy to the disciples' death. And again, even as we say, but he will shed my blood, Jesus said, me of my life be grieving. All this I suffer for your good. Be steadfast and believing. Life will from death the victory win. My innocence shall bear your sin. And you are blessed forever. And while those are words penned by a man, they are words that summarize what we believe to be true. Jesus is the one who suffered and 
died and rose again for us. You know, it's for good reason that Luther referred to the prophet Isaiah as the fifth gospel. As Isaiah said, you heard read earlier, you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. And with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Dear Christians, you know that in holy baptism, that water of salvation is born of Not mere water, but water being alive by the living word of God, brought to you by the comforting spirit. Because in those waters you receive the word and the spirit that saves a word that brings life and hope in the midst of suffering and death when all else seems lost. Because in baptism, you were connected to Christ and his death and his resurrection. And the victory of the Lord's is yours. Because by God given faith, we believe that even death will not separate us from the love of Christ or from those whom he loves forever. This is our hope. This is our comfort that brings us joy so that we can sing in the midst of our suffering, finding hope in Christ and all that he has done for us, even sending us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, God himself, for you and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 1030. You're also invited to join us for Vespers and Catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.